No, I think it's okay to break a spine every time. I think that's fine. I don't think there are any issues with that. And if you want to dog your pages, I don't think there's any issues with that either. Welcome back to another episode of the Such a Fun Read podcast. I'm your host and resident reader, Sheree Lampley, and here we will be diving in each week to chat about the books we love, the books people just can't stop talking about, and how we deal with being book obsessed. In this week's episode, we are going to be doing a book tag. We're going to be doing the 20 questions with a booktuber book tag. I saw Jack Edwards do this tag the other day, and I thought it might be fun to do it myself. I ended up liking the question, so I figured, why not? And I have been a booktuber since 2015, give or take a seven year break. And I like book tags. I kind of miss them being more of a thing in this community. I do think they're a good way to get to know the booktuber. I also remember a few years ago that people actually complained about book tags and that there were way too many of them that were done in the community. And now I just feel like there aren't enough. So hopefully at some point we can meet in the middle. I also miss sit down videos where we're just sitting in front of the camera. Probably one of the reasons why this podcast exists. I do enjoy reading vlogs, but there's just something about a sit down video that I wish more people would do them. Or maybe they do and I just need to be pointed in their direction. Now in regards to this book tag, I did try to do some digging. It seems the tag was created by a channel named Ben's Blurb. I saw that they were linked in one of the videos that did this tag, but I don't think that that channel exists anymore. But I did see quite a bit people do this tag, so I think this is definitely something that others should do. Now, without further ado, let's just get into these questions. So question one is, how many books is too many books in a series? And for this, I don't really know if I have a particular answer. I mean, my favorite trilogies. But I do understand if you need an extra book. So I guess that would be a quartet. What what is the name of four books in the series? Is it a quartet? Is it something else? But being the fact that I'm not great about completing series or continuing on with series, you would think that a smaller number would be my answer. But I'm I'm okay as long as the series has come out and I'm reading them as they are being published, I can continue reading on it in the series. But a lot of the books I end up reading are ones that have already been completed or they're a few books ahead and it takes me a while to actually get to the end of the series. I'm not a big fan of marathoning series Whenever I've tried to marathon a series, I end up in like a reading slump. So that doesn't help matters. But at least if I'm able to say, hey, I'm going to read a book in this series month per month, then I'm most likely able to complete or get current in that series. But that's not even answering the question. Um, I think my answer is 10 double digits. Once you get to double digits, that's when it feels like these are a lot of books. There are a lot of books in this series. There seem to be a lot of books to tell the story. And were all these books really needed? Question two, how do you feel about cliffhangers? I don't think I hate them. Wait, let me not lie. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I think about the books I've read with cliffhangers. I know Red Rising has a few cliffhangers and I think about movies. I know when I went to go see the new Into the Spider-Verse movie, which I love by the way, but when I went to go see that movie and it got to the end and there was a cliffhanger, I wasn't happy, but that was because I was enjoying myself so well. I don't know, but time has passed and I am more okay with there being a cliffhanger. I think I'm okay with cliffhangers. Actually, I think cliffhangers would work for me because if there is a cliffhanger, it is going to make me want to pick up the next book a lot quicker. And I just talked about how I'm not that good at completing series. So whatever is able to help me complete series, if it's a cliffhanger, whatever it is, 
put it in there. Question three, hardback or paperback? So this one is all about what mood I'm in. It is very much all about what mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm in, sometimes I'm in the mood to read a hardcover and sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm definitely in the mood to just read a paperback and I'm looking on my bookshelves and I see a bunch of books that are hardcovers that I just want to read in that moment. But because they are not paperback, I either don't read them or I end up just listening to the audiobook instead of reading it physically. It really does depend on what mood I'm in. I do definitely like the way hardcovers look on the shelf. I say paperbacks are probably easier to travel with but I have a Kindle also. So now if this question was ebook or physical book, the answer would be physical book. Even though I have my Kindle, I mostly read physical books. But honestly, whether it's a hardcover or a paperback, it really does depend on what mood I'm in. Question four, favorite book. So I've mentioned my favorite series, The Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown, and also the Also series by Deborah Harkness. I don't know if I have a standalone favorite book. I know if you asked me this question about a decade ago, I would probably say History of Love by Nicole Cross, but it's been so long since I read that book and maybe I'll do a reread of it. I'm not sure. I don't know why I'm talking about rereading because I have so many new books I want to read, but if it makes me happy to reread, I should just reread it. That's okay. But yeah, I don't know if I have a favorite standalone book. Here's what I'll do. I will pick a book in each of my favorite series and mention how they are my favorite. So for the All Souls series, I'm going to have to go with Shadow of Night. That is the second book in this series. So my history with this series started back in 2016. I had read the first book in the series back then and I actually didn't really like it, but I kept the book. And then like a year later, I gave it another chance and it felt like I was reading a totally different book. I don't know if that's happened for any of you. That's happened to me twice. First with The Magicians by Lev Grossman. That's another series I have not completed. And I think I read that first book in like 2016. And I never watched the show either because I wanted to complete the series before I watched the show. But anyways, I reread A Discovery of Witches and I really enjoyed that book. Then about a month or two later, I decided I was going to read the second book in the series, Shadow of Night. And I don't know if it was just the perfect time for me to read it or what it was, but I became obsessed with those characters. I became obsessed with that story. Oh, I just really enjoy it. I remember reading an Instagram comment one day, or maybe it was an Instagram post. But I remember them mentioning why they really enjoyed the series. But I think in that post, they were trying to say how the characters weren't really trying to save the world. Like that's not what the story was about. And because I guess they had been reading a lot of young adult fantasy or dystopian or whatnot, where it's pretty much a lot of them at the time, at least. A lot of them at the time, at least at the time this post was done, which probably like 2017. That's probably when I saw it. And I think that post is why I ended up picking the book back up. But anyway, it was just something different for them to read. And I agree with that. And don't get me wrong, I love my Katnesses and Trisses. And even in the adult world, I love my Darrows. But every once in a while, it's just okay to read about a witch trying to figure out what to do and whether or not she wants to be a witch. Oh, and whether or not she should be falling in love with a vampire. Question five, least favorite book. Hmm, I don't know if I have a least favorite book. I guess I could mention one of the books that I read last year. And I feel like I might have forgotten about reading it, especially when it came to the mid-year freakout tag, because I picked a couple other books to say were like my least favorite. But I think this one... I think this one is probably my least favorite that I read in 2023, and that is Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. So here's the thing. I believe with this book, I'm probably most likely going to be staying away from sports romances. And I say that because this book involves a figure skater, and I am a huge fan of figure skating. And when you open the book and you start reading it, First of all, the skater is in a pairs group 
She's on the Paris team and she is, I think, hung over when she's going to practice, which, okay. Then you turn the page and you see that they are attempting side-by-side -side quad lutzes. And when I say I had to put the book down for a moment and actually walk around my apartment, that's exactly what I did after reading that. Like I said, she is on a Paris team. And for some reason, they seem to be attempting the second hardest jump. And I say second hardest because Ilya Melanin is apparently out here landing quad axles like it's nothing. So the quad Lutz is now the second hardest jump. And for them to attempt side-by-side -side quad Lutzes, which you don't really see quads really in pairs, maybe a quad throw, but side-by-sides? I don't even know if I see triple Lutzes as side-by-sides. I will have to go back and look, but that bothered me. And I just, it was too, the book is too close to one of my favorite sports. And also another thing, the male in the pair, he apparently could land these quad lutzes easily. And my first thought process is, well, if he's landing quad lutzes, he's no longer a part of this pair's team because U.S. figure skating is going to make him a singles skater. That was my thought. So it was kind of hard for me to grasp the figure skating aspect of it. Like I can read fantasy. I can read about dragons. I can read about magic systems. I can read about a lot of things that aren't actually real. But when you put figure skating in a book, I can't, I just can't remove myself from reality. So I think it's probably best if I step away and don't really read sports romances, which is okay. Also with the book, I would say I didn't really like the romance of it. I think it tried to start as enemies to lovers, which it wasn't. And it also felt like the book was too long. It's like 450 pages or something around there, which it is at least 150 pages too long, maybe 125. After a while, it just felt like it dragged on. So yeah, I guess I would say Icebreaker by Hannah Grace is my answer for this one. I do have another one. That would be my least favorite of 2023. But if I had to pick one of a book that I didn't even finish. Now, I don't normally DNF books. I have just put books down and then gone back to them later. That I have no problem doing. Whether it's weeks later, months later, or even years later, I do go back to the book and I either restart it or pick up where I left off. But there's a book that I got about 150 pages in and I realized this is not a book for me. This is not a book for me. This is not something that makes me happy reading. And that book is Crave by Tracy Wolf. I don't know where my copy is. I do still own it because I started annotating it. But I don't think that is a book that I will ever go back to reading. It just wasn't, it wasn't for me. It really it really wasn't for me. That's all. Yeah. Question six. Love triangles. Yes or no? You know, there are good love triangles out there. I've read the first book in Outlander. Yes, only the first one. Of course, only the first one. But I read that one. And that love triangle makes so much sense. It makes a lot of sense. Do I prefer them? No. No, I don't. But if you can make them make sense, yes. If it actually serves the story, then sure. But if it's just thrown in there, just to be thrown in there, no. Heck, I don't even consider Twilight. I don't even consider that being a love triangle. I really don't. I don't think Jacob ever stood a chance. I think if I'm to consider there being a love triangle, I have to believe that both of them stand a chance. A really good love triangle is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. There's a really good love triangle in that. Question seven, the most recent book you just couldn't finish. Like I said, I don't really DNF books. So I guess the answer would be Crave, but that was so long ago. I was, I don't even remember what year it was, but a book I have put down just for a bit until I get back to it 
It's Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin. The main character was just getting on my nerves. And I, <laughs> she was just getting on my nerves. And when I'm in the mood for her, because I do want to know what happens when I'm in the mood for her, maybe I'll pick it back up. Question eight, a book you are currently reading. Now I'm currently reading Ace of Spades by Farida Abika Iamade. I know I'm mispronouncing that and I do apologize. But I'm currently reading that and no, that was not on my February TBR. But it is a book that interests me at the time. And also it is a book that I was thinking about reading before I ended up making my TBR. So it counts. It's a young adult thriller. As a little bit of like Gossip Girl, Pretty Little Liars thing, there seem to be these two characters at this school and they were both just announced head boy and head girl. But for some reason, someone seems to be attacking them. That person is like sending out text messages that involve secrets of those two people. And we just need to figure out who it is. I'm enjoying it so far. I should finish it in the next day or two. Question nine, the last book you recommended to someone. I'm not gonna lie, I am always recommending Red Rising. <laughs> I do that quite a lot. I really do. I do that quite, quite a lot. But I feel like there's been something else I've recommended. I just have to think of it. I did get one of my friends to read the side trilogy by Neil Schusterman. I remember Legendborn by Tracy Dion. That is the last book I recommended to someone. They were asking my thoughts on Sarah J Mass because I think she didn't really like the first book in the Akatar series. And I let her know that I have a very unpopular opinion about the second book, which we can discuss one day. We can, we can get into it. We can discuss it. And I told her, if you're still looking for fantasy, Legendborn by Tracy Dion is a good entry. It's young adults. It's set at the University of North Carolina. There's a Thorian legend. The main character is awesome. The other characters are also awesome. So yeah, Legendborn. I recommend it to you guys as well. If you have not read Legend Born by Tracy Dion, I think you should. There are two books out in this series. I think, I don't know how many books are going to be in this series. The third book, I believe, comes out in 2025. Question 10. The oldest book you've ever read by publication date. So I read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I read Romeo and Juliet in junior high. Maybe that's the oldest. Can I say that? Romeo and Juliet? It was a play but it was in book form and we read it. I'll say that, Romeo and Juliet. There you go. Question 11, newest book you've read by publication date. All right, I'm gonna have to do some investigating. I'm gonna have to go on my Goodreads. I haven't completed anything that has been published yet in 2024. So I really do try not to talk about this series all the time. But it is Lightbringer by Pierce Brown. That published in July of last year. And I read it the week it came out or the week after it came out. I, I don't know. I read it in July and I really enjoyed myself. It was my favorite book of 2023. I laughed. I smiled. I was grateful and I cried and I was angry. And there is a character that I want to feel pain. Yep, there is a character I want to feel a lot of pain. And I'm hopeful that I'll get to read chapters upon chapters upon chapters of this character feeling that pain. So, but yeah, if you haven't read the Red Rising Saga, go ahead and start it. It might torture you a little bit. It does me, but it's all worth it in the end. Question 12 is favorite author. I don't, oh, I don't think I have a favorite author. Well, I mean, I like Pierce Brown. I like Deborah Harkness. I like what Tracy Dion's doing with her series. I read The Final Empire, Miss Born for the first time last year. Very much enjoyed Brandon Sanderson. I don't know if I have a favorite author. I really don't. I really don't think I do. Question 13, buying books or borrowing books? I guess I have a lot of books, so I guess buying, but I do borrow. I did go to the library the other day, had to return some books. I picked up a couple others. I do borrow, but then I have so many books on my shelf that 
I want to read. So can I say borrowing from my bookshelves? Which I really should do more of than continuing to add to the bookshelf. Question 14. A book that you dislike that everyone else seems to love. Hmm. Well, okay. So, so about A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. I read that book twice and I still feel like nothing happened for the longest time. I don't know. I know so many people love that book. I don't. And I don't like Resand. I don't like Resand. And this isn't me being a Tamlin stan because I am not because I didn't really like Tamlin. I guess she grows as a character. I don't know. Yeah, and I know I'm pretty much in the minority with that take on that book, but that's okay. Every book isn't for everyone. That is quite all right. And as long as we all are aware of that. Also, I have not decided if I'm going to continue reading the Fourth Wing series. I didn't buy Iron Flame. I haven't decided if I'm going to. It's not on the top of my list. That book was, it was... It was, oh, that book wasn't my favorite either. Question 15, bookmarks are dog ears. Oh, I'm probably gonna piss even more people off, but I mean, I use a bookmark, but I have no issues dog earing a page. And I really don't understand why people get so upset about that. Like I've seen so many people get upset about that. And I also break my spines as well. I don't see a problem with that. I don't see a problem with that at all. You do what makes you comfortable reading. I think it's okay to break a spine. I was gonna say I think it's okay to break a spine every once in a while. No, I think it's okay to break a spine every time. I think that's fine. I don't think there are any issues with that. And if you wanna dog your pages, I don't think there's any issues with that either. Question 16, a book you can always reread. Honestly, as weird as it might sound, when I'm in a book slump, I return to Red Rising. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Actually, I do know why, because I love the characters. That or the Hunger Games. I will return to the Hunger Games as well. Question 17, can you read while hearing music? If there are lyrics, most likely not. I can have the TV on though. That I can. I can have the TV on in the background and do some reading. But if I have headphones on or even my computer phone is right next to me, if there is music on and there are lyrics, it definitely takes me out of the book and I can't concentrate. So as long as it's not lyrical, I can do classical. I do a lot of movie scores. I definitely listen to a lot of movie scores when I read. Question 18. One or multiple POVs. I think for me, if there's just one POV, it is quicker for me to finish the book. Multiple POVs are fine, but I think just having one POV, I think I'm able to concentrate more and I'll be able to finish the book quicker. Question 19. Do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Oh, this is definitely over multiple days. I don't think I've ever read a book in one sitting. Well, actually I did. I did read a book in one sitting. And guess what? I cannot tell you what the name of that book is or what it was about. I remember doing it though. I cannot tell you what the book was called. I know the cover was black. That is all I can tell you. I don't know. So I guess my answer is multiple days because if I read a book in multiple days, maybe it just sticks with me a lot more. Question 20, a book you've read because of the cover. I believe my answer is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I read that back in, hmm, when did I read that? 2014, 2015? I read that back then, but I really, really like that cover. Also, I really like that book. That is one of my favorite books. So I definitely think I got that book based off of the cover. I definitely think so. And those are the questions. That wasn't too bad. I hope you're not all mad at me because of my takes on A Court of Mist and Fury or my take on dog earring or breaking spines. I mean, I didn't even have to mention breaking spines because that wasn't part of the question, but I just thought I would put that out there and let you guys know that I break paperback spines all the time. But that is all I have for today. And thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Such a Fun Read. I really hope you enjoyed it and I would love to know your thoughts, especially on breaking spines or dog earring. Please let me know your thoughts on that. And also don't forget to raise five stars and show us love on your favorite podcast app. That would really help the show. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss a new episode. And I will talk to you all next week. Happy reading.